Hey, what's up everyone? So I just acquired 128 gigs of RAM um, from Reddit actually, from the Home Lab Sales subreddit. Um, planning to replace this with, um, planning to replace the RAM that's in my server now with this RAM. So I have eight 16 gigabyte sticks here um, for a total of 128. And currently in the server, I have uh, 64 gigs total. And I think there's like 16 sticks in there, uh, all of them four gigs. So this is faster, a faster clock speed. I think it's uh, 1866. I have no idea what the other RAM is. So I think this is going to work as long as I take out all the other RAM and just use this clock speed. I'm pretty sure there's not going to be any issues. Um, and if this works, if all this 128 gig of RAM works, I'm going to go ahead and add back um, some of these slower clocked RAM and just see if that works. Because at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get as much RAM as I can as possible. I don't really care about the clock speed or, you know, the, the absolute best performance from this RAM. I just want more RAM. I'm running out of space with 64 gigs. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Uh, first thing we got to do is actually turn the server off. So you can probably hear it humming in the background. Um, we're going to turn it off through the browser. If we can just log into uh, our ESXi hypervisor console and turn it off. Uh, and once that's done, we'll crack open the case, pull out all the old RAM, put all the new RAM in and close it up and turn it on and just hope everything works. All right, guys, so I, I browsed to my uh, ESXi console, the web console that allows me to control it. And I've turned all the running VMs off because I need to enter maintenance mode in order to shut this machine down safely. So you can see they're all turned off. Now I need to go to uh, maintenance mode. And I always forget where that is. Um, so you don't have to do this in Proxmox. It's kind of annoying, but um, it's probably for the best here. So here it is, enter maintenance mode. And you can see right now I have 63.99 gigs of RAM. Hopefully the next time we uh, boot this up, this is gonna say 128. So let's, uh, let's uh, enter maintenance mode. Uh, okay. VMs are still powered on. All right, which ones are still on? I also don't like, I don't know why I can't see the bottom ones. Well, I guess we can filter by. All right, let's turn this guy off. And okay, now that they're all off. Now we'll go back to maintenance mode. All right, now we're in maintenance mode. Okay, now we can shut it down. So I'm just gonna hit shut down and yes. And if you listen closely, you should be able to hear the server turn off when it turns off. Still running. Now I guess we could access iDRAC and see what's going on. Okay, here it just turned off. So it takes about 30 seconds to turn off. All right, now let's. Uh, now we're ready to actually um, open it up. All right, so at this point we're ready to open this up. Um, first, let's actually. So it's turned off, but I want to unplug the power first. So just unplug the power. And I'm just gonna unlock this thing here. So just open it up. And it just comes off nice and easily like that. All right, and we have to lift this thing off and this is where all the RAM is located. So you can see here, we pretty much have all of the slots filled except for two. So if we look a little closer, you can see there are 16 sticks there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and pull them all out. Um, so I noticed that the ones furthest away are populated with sticks, but the ones closest to the CPU aren't. So I'm gonna follow that same pattern. I'm not gonna put anything in those closest spots, slots. Uh, I think that might have something to, I think that has some significance, so I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna take these out by um, pressing the little buttons. And you can see here, these are four gigabytes each. I think you can see that. So I'm just gonna carefully take these out one by one. That's all 16 of them. 
Now let's start putting the new RAM in. So here you can see this is one of the 16 gigabyte versions. And I'm going to start from the outside and work my way in. So this seems to go like this. Very carefully place this in here. Don't want to force anything in. And once I feel it in the grooves, just push evenly on it. And just make sure make sure both sides clicked. And there we go, it's locked in. So let's get the next one. I'm gonna put this on the other side. Here, there's two clicks. There we go. All right, so I've got the eight sticks in there. This should be 128 gigs. I'm going to close it back up and turn it back on and hope for the best. All right, I just turned the server on. You can hear it booting up now. I'm just waiting for it to boot up so I can get into iDRAC so I can see the the console. So it looks like it's uh, it's working here. Don't hear any scary beeps or anything, so that's good. I would be pretty impressed if this just worked the first try without having to tinker with anything. All right, let's see here. All right, still kind of loading. I'm going to launch this. Um, so if you guys don't know how to launch, so I'm using an old version of it, it's iDRAC 6, so I can't use the browser. I have to use this Java program. So I actually need to run Java, I think VC or Java, what's that thing called? Java WS. Okay. So Java WS, and then we'll give it this thing here. So I'm just going to drag that in. And there were a few steps I had to take to get this working on the Mac um, just because it was it's older. I made a video on how to do it in Windows, and, and the, fix, the fixes are basically the same. Uh, there, there's just some security uh, things you have to change in the settings. But if, you, if anyone is interested, just leave a comment, and I can make another video on that. Um, so accept the risk. So I just want to make sure this is not blowing up. So that's okay. All right, so it looks good so far. Um, let me check. I want to see uh, if I can see any, where I can see the amount of RAM in here, if it's going to show me. Oh, there's got to be a way to see it in here. Maybe it has to boot up first. I'm just going to keep an eye on this. Okay, the amount of system memory has changed. Okay, has been uh, unsupported memory configuration. Oh, what did that say? <laughs> Couldn't read that. Um, okay, so it looks like there's. Looks like that might have just been a warning. I honestly do not know. I know in the the manual there was a chart that kind of looked like this. I didn't pay close enough attention to it. Um, so I'm just gonna let this thing start up and see if it actually works. So wish me luck. All right, I'm just gonna let this run. This takes a little bit of time. All right, we got some messages here. Uh, I'm not sure what this means. I 
Doesn't look like an error. Replaced part detected for device, that's fine. Part replacement license is not present. Okay, so that just that message just went away on it on its own. Let me see if any more detail has been populated in here. Oh, where'd that thing go? All right, and we're into ESXi now. So that tells me uh, it didn't break anything. So once this boots up, I know where to find out how much memory is on the system. Okay, 80 gigs of memory. Interesting. All right, and we gotta find out why it only recognized 80. All right, so ESXi is booted up. Let me just head in there. It's looking like we're gonna have to open it up again and do something. Yeah, only 79.9. So for some reason, it doesn't recognize all 128. So I guess I have to look at the Dell R710 server manual. Yeah, I was hoping I wouldn't have to dig into this, but it looks like maybe we do. So there's a whole setting on memory here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and read through. All right, so I'm gonna reboot this and get into the BIOS and see what I can see on the memory settings. I wanna see if there's different options because it seems like there's multiple different like ways of using the memory like different modes so I'm gonna figure out how to restart this alright so I'm just gonna restart it all right, so it's booting back up. Let's get into the BIOS here. Uh, is this thing still on? Yep, uh, system setup F2. How do I hit F2? Oh, it actually, my keyboard actually works. I didn't realize my keyboard would work there. All right, so let me poke around in here. So Let's see, my, all right, memory settings, ECC. Trying to figure out how I can change this. Oh, here we go, memory operating mode, optimizer mode. How do I change it? All right. Space plus or minus to change. Doesn't seem to let me change any of this stuff. All right, so I think I have an idea of what I did wrong. So I needed to put them in A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, B1, B2. So they actually aren't in order. Um, if you look at the the um, the names inside the server, like A1 isn't the far, the furthest one out, and then A2 isn't the next one. They're not in order. So I'll show you what I mean when I open the server back up. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, fix this mistake. So the first one's A1, so this needs to come out. Let's just take these three out. Well, we need A4 to stay in. So.
All right, so that's how it looks. Looks kind of strange, but let's give that a shot. All right, so I'm booting it up again, and let's see what we get this time. All right, so I'm just logging into iDRAC. Fingers crossed this is going to work. Okay. Still complaining about something. There we go, 128, awesome. And the speed is faster, great. Now the only other thing I'm curious about is can I add more RAM, some of the older RAM that I had in there? Uh, I don't know. I think I might try that. All right, starting it up again, this time with, I added some of the old memory in there. I just wanna see if it works. All right, back in the BIOS here. Let's check out the memory settings. Just wanna see if there's more than 128 now. Yes, there is 136, but the memory speed is lower. So that's the trade-off. We're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna lose the memory speed, but we're gonna get more memory. Uh, cool, that, that's good to know. All right, so I think this is like the 10th time we've tried to get this, uh, configured correctly, but this time I think I got it right. So, all right, this is good. The amount of system memory has changed and I don't see that error anymore where it was saying it wasn't configured properly. And there we go, system memory size 128, the system speed 1333. That all uh, sounds good. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna keep it at 128. Uh, I'm not gonna add the slower RAM into it. I don't wanna, it's not worth the uh, little amount of memory I'd be getting. Uh, to slow all the memory speed down. All right, so we're up and running in ESXi now, and you can see here, 127.99, that's close enough for me. Uh, that's awesome, so now we can, uh, I can have more virtual machines running at once because I couldn't run all these at the same time, but pretty sure now I'll be able to because I just doubled my storage, uh, my RAM capacity. Um, but yeah, ran into quite a few hiccups there, so probably a good idea to, I should have re read these instructions beforehand. Um, but basically what helped me solve it was some of these websites and also when, if you closely pay attention to when the BIOS was booting up, it would, it gave a little diagram of what it should look like. Now, the first time I saw it, I thought that was like how I currently had it installed and it was a problem, but I read online here and no, like that's actually a suggestion the server's giving you, um, like you should put them in these slots. Um, so that's what I actually ended up doing. But yeah, I mean, definitely some, it was fun, some lessons learned, and I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.